The League of Nations was officially established in January 1920. It was basically set up in order to prevent future global warfare after the horrors of World War I. At the height of its influence in 1935, the League of Nations had 58 member countries. However, the organization was unable to prevent a number of conflicts and invasions and ultimately failed to halt the outbreak of World War II. As a result, the League of Nations disbanded in 1945, giving way to the newly formed United Nations. So what exactly did the League of Nations entail, and what were its main successes and failures? At the end of World War I, much of Europe was left reeling. It had been the most destructive conflict in history, and many global leaders were seeking a safeguard against further mass bloodshed. Ironically, it was American President Woodrow Wilson who was the biggest advocate of forming a World Security Council. However, the United States ultimately opted not to join the League of Nations, which is considered to be a major factor in its failure to prevent conflicts. In January of 1919, world leaders met at the Paris Peace Conference to negotiate a way forward following World War I. It was widely agreed that some form of a global security council was necessary in order to prevent future atrocities. Led by Woodrow Wilson and British Prime Minister David George, an agreement was made to form the League of Nations. Wilson figured prominently in deciding this new organization's main goals and functions. He had previously outlaid his vision for a new international council in this 14 points proposal. Amongst these ideas was that every nation deserved the right to its own political identity, and that no dispute should be settled with armed force. There was also a consensus at the Paris Conference for political transparency, and no more secretive building up of armaments, which would only serve to create more tensions. However, as much as Wilson's ideas were lauded in Europe, his proposal was met with indifference and opposition back home. His political influence was already waning, and several prominent Republicans were firmly against America joining this new organization. Specifically, they objected to having to contribute financially to the League of Nations. They were also concerned that by joining, they wouldn't be able to fully protect American people and territories. It was very much a matter of self-interest, with the objectors seeing no reason why America had to become involved in what were essentially European problems. Those opposed to the League, also known as isolationists, worried that the U.S. might become unnecessarily embroiled in international affairs, and Wilson's wishes were denied. Nevertheless, the League of Nations was set up with a similar structure as today's United Nations, anyway, without America. It consisted of a general assembly made up of all the member countries, there were 42 original founding members, although this would change significantly throughout the next two decades. Just as with the United Nations, the League of Nations was also comprised of various organs, or bodies. This included a general council, which consisted of a number of permanent member countries, with other countries serving on a rotating basis. The original permanent members were Great Britain, France, Italy, and Japan, with the United States being a significant absence. The headquarters were located in Geneva, Switzerland, and the League of Nations went about outlining its main criteria. The member countries initially agreed to be open about their supply of arms, as well as any plans for armament in the future. A key policy was that of shared responsibility. This meant that if a member country or countries felt like they were under threat or involved in a dispute, that then affected all members of the League of Nations. Similarly, it was declared that an attack on one member country would count as an attack on all. Instead, it was decided that any dispute would be settled by the Assembly. Issues would be discussed and settlements reached, with war being the last desirable outcome. This led to an international court being formed. If a nation or a state was found to have seriously breached the League of Nations protocols, action would be taken, firstly through economic sanctions. Only then, if there was still no progress, armed force would be used. Just as with today's United Nations, the League of Nations has no army of its own. It relied on the available forces of member countries. However, this soon proved to be problematic. Almost immediately, the credibility of the League of Nations was questioned when it failed to intervene in the Russian invasion of Persia, modern-day Iran. Even though Persia appealed to the League of Nations for help, they were denied. The League was reluctant to step in, as they believed because Russia wasn't a member country, Russia would reject the League's jurisdiction. This became the pattern throughout much of the 1920s and the 1930s. The rise of fascism in Europe gave rise to a number of incidents that grew more and more serious towards the end of the 1930s. In 1923, Italian forces occupied the Greek island of Corfu. Mussolini ignored the League of Nations' order to withdraw and instead demanded that Greece make payments to Italy. This was especially awkward, as Italy was one of the League's founding countries. Meanwhile, European disarmament talks were thwarted when Germany demanded the same number of arms as everybody else. The League of Nations also enjoyed its greatest successes on a humanitarian level. 
Again, this is very much like the history of the United Nations, which has had more luck in implementing aid programs than preventing conflict. Some of the League's more notable achievements included organizing the safe return of over 500,000 prisoners of war. The Nansen passport was created, which was one of the first visa-type documents that allowed refugees to return home or settle in a safe location. The League also made significant efforts to reduce disease and clamp down on slave labor. A slavery commission was formed, and more than 200,000 people were freed from slavery in Africa and Burma. The League of Nations Health Organization worked closely with specialists in developing countries to fight diseases such as malaria and leprosy. The organization also initiated policies aimed at improving nutrition and infant health. This included providing educational programs and increasing the availability of essential medicines and vaccines. In the 1930s, depression rocked the world and caused a rise in fascism and dictatorships. Countries became more insular, and several sought to aggressively expand in what was a sink-or-swim mentality. Germany, Japan, and Italy in particular were hell-bent on expanding their empires. Japan invaded northeastern China in 1932 as the League looked on absolutely helplessly. When the League voiced its support for China's sovereignty, Japan simply ignored them and left the League in 1933. Germany shortly took Japan's lead and also parted ways with the League in 1933. By now, the League of Nations was fast losing control of what it had set up to do. In 1935, Italian forces marched into Abyssinia, which is now Ethiopia. Mussolini was looking to expand Italy's territories and saw Abyssinia as being up for grabs. While the League was quick to condemn the invasion, Britain and France had secretly agreed to hand over Abyssinia to Italy. Mussolini was seen as Hitler's ally, and Britain and France were anxious to keep him on side. This pattern of appeasement from Britain and France was con to continue and arguably led to the outbreak of World War II. The four leaders of Britain, France, Germany, and Italy met for the Munich Conference in 1938. By this stage, Italy had also withdrawn from the League of Nations. Britain and France were desperate to avoid another war, and British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain gave his blessing for Hitler to take a chunk of Czechoslovakia. This famously led to Hitler taking full advantage of Britain's perceived weakness and continuing to expand the Nazi Empire. The League of Nations Assembly was strongly against appeasing Germany, as it was a clear act of imperial aggression. However, Britain and France ignored the protests. In 1937, Japan made its intentions clear when it took control of the Chinese capital, Nanking. Emboldened by this success, Japan then set its sights on taking as much of Asia as possible. Again, the League of Nations could only watch. When German forces marched into Poland in 1939, World War II erupted. The League of Nations had failed in its key goal to prevent further warfare. Ultimately, the lack of cohesion amongst nations left the League powerless to intervene effectively. So what were its main shortcomings? In hindsight, with Germany, Italy, and Japan leaving and the US declining to take part, the League of Nations was continuously facing a massive uphill battle to maintain world peace. When the United Nations was formed in 1945, America was quick to put up its hand and join. Perhaps the mess leading up to World War II has created a sense of regret, and the U.S. became one of the key founding countries of the U.N. Although the League of Nations was unable to stop another global war, it was instrumental in setting up the basic structure for what would become the United Nations. It was also the first truly global organization that was able to bring the nations together to negotiate and work towards peace. While the United Nations also had its fair share of critics, it was able to learn from the League's mistakes and form a much more cohesive international system of ensuring global peace. Or at least, attempting to.